Welcome back. And um, for the first time, we are going to learn about free radicals and halogenation addition reactions. Okay. And I've said two things. One of them is the free radical, and the other is the halogenation addition reactions. Okay. So first, let's start with free radical. Okay. Free radical. What is a free radical? It's just the opposite of what we have learned so far, or at least it's different from what we have learned so far, which is um, we did learn that the basic principle is you need two electrons to make a bond, right? What if we break the bond with some kind of energy uh, resource that we would end up with two free electrons, okay? Now, these are called a free radical, okay? And one of the common sources of energy that we use to break a bond is light. And light in chemistry and physics, at least, is commonly referred to as H nu. Okay, H is Planck's constant, and nu is the frequency of light. We, will, we won't be doing any math on this, so you don't need to quite uh, remember this formula. It will be given to you in the actual reaction. But the matter of fact is this is called a Planck's constant. Planck's constant. And this right here, folks, is the frequency of the light that we shine on our molecule. Okay, so we now know whenever a species has a odd electron, it's called a free radical. Okay, the common molecules, now I did mention free radical addition reaction. That means you would generate a free radical and then the free radical would then generate a series of free radicals, and then we will generate more products, okay? And how we add them is where we are going to learn, okay? All right, so the common source of free radical generator is Cl2. It's called diatomic chlorine, chlorine, are simply a chlorine molecule, okay? Or chlorine, okay? So whenever we shine light on this chlorine molecule, remember Cl2 is essentially nothing but a Cl connected to another Cl, okay? Of course, there will be uh, additional lone pair of electrons, if you remember your general chemistry, on these chlorines, which are basically not effective in carrying out a reaction. It's the, <clears throat> it's the two bonded electrons that actually play a vital role, right? So if we take this chlorine molecule, essentially we are shining light on it, okay? Not just your, uh, not just any light, a light with some, some intense frequency, okay? So what happens then? We're gonna break this bond and we are going to generate two Cl, that is, we are generating a Cl radical plus a Cl radical, okay? These two are collectively known as free radical, or in this case, there's two of them, so plural free radicals, okay? Now, once generated, these free radicals can react with alkanes. Remember, uh, the first set of compounds we learned a while back is alkanes. These can react with alkanes in a sequence to generate additional compounds, okay? So the basic of the basic alkane is methane. That's the most foundational alkane you can find and that is nothing but CH4, okay? And if you all remember how we draw our free 
our full skeleton structures, then we write this way, right? Now, this carbon is a primary carbon, right? Because anytime a carbon has at least two or more hydrogens attached to a carbon, that's usually considered a secondary car, uh, considered a tertiary, um, considered a primary carbon, right? So what happens now is, well, basically, here, here is, here's something very important that I want you to remember because it may not be possible every time to come show this, but I will try my best to show this type of mechanism as frequently as I can, but it's also explicitly stated that you have to remember this. Not, it's not possible to redraw this mechanism every single time. Okay. All right. So when this one of the free radical, you know, we got two of them, only one of them. I'm just for, for convenience, I'm going to draw the seal on the side. It really doesn't matter which side you draw. And then you got, it really doesn't matter which carbon hydrogen bond you pick because you know, they're all identical. So I'm going to draw this mechanism alone in a slightly different color. So you can see when this free radical reacts with this hydrogen, well, this has got this electron right here, and this has got this electron right here. So they combine. Since we are not combining two full electrons in a bond, we ideally represented it using a partial arrow as shown like this. Okay, this is not a full arrow. Whenever you're dealing with free radicals, you don't draw a full arrow like this. Okay, like this. This is only partial because there's only one electron involved and then there's the other electron involved here. They combine and what happens then? Well, you are now going to generate this. Plus, now we've made HCl, right? So, we have now a, a primary radical, okay? A carbon with three hydrogens is a primary radical, right? Okay, this can now combine with another, the reminder of the seal. So I'm gonna draw this over here. Now this can react with Okay, this can react with another Cl dot, okay? Now what happens is this free radical combines with, again, whenever you're dealing with free radical, you don't write full arrows. This combines with this radical to generate the final molecule, which is C H H. Cl H. And you can continue doing this, okay? And what happens then is, okay? Okay. What happens now is, remember in the previous screen, we made this as our first product, okay? But your general chemistry knowledge should suggest that there is not just one Cl2 in the reaction mixture that's generating two Cl dot. Okay, there's probably several of these. And so this is called a cyclic reaction. So we've made our first product. Now this can react with our second product, react with another Cl dot. And this time we're gonna pick this. So again, just like last time, this combines with this free odd electron, okay? And in the process, we are going to generate a free radical plus HCl, okay? And now this can react with another Cl dot. I'm gonna pick my red color here. 
Okay, this now reacts with, again, make sure you don't draw full arrows, write partials, so that this combines with the additional free uh, radical on the other chlorine atom, and then you generate this. Okay, and then obviously, this now can now react with with another free radical Cl and this time I am going to pick this hydrogen okay again as always this hydrogen combines with this free radical and in the process we generate a free radical on the methane group. So we now have this plus HCl. Now this can react with one of the other CLs that's left. So this reaction will go on until you're actually done generating until you, you, you don't have any more hydrogens to. Let me redraw this. Okay. So what happens now is we are left with three chlorine atoms. Okay. We can also write this as CH2, Cl2, dichloromethane, and then you also have CHCl3 and then now this can finally for the last time will react with the set of free radicals okay plus Cl dot okay now for convenience you know I'm gonna write it on this side so I'm not dragging the arrow all the way here okay so I'm just gonna say this over here okay now again with the previous versions what we have done this bond okay you got two electrons right so this bond combined this electron combines with this odd electron resulting in the formation of a free radical on the parent group okay plus hcl now again I don't want to drag the arrow all the way to the other side, so I'm simply going to write my CL, the reminder of the two CL dot, and then we're going to combine this free radical with this free radical, and in the process, we generate the last of the possible product. So now we have this and we can also write this as CCL4. Now, we won't be necessarily doing this type of, you know, for all of them, but this is how a free radical reaction really works. The take home message on this particular video before I create a different video to extend this concept is whenever you're gener combining two, odd electrons that is one electron on each species then you should not use a full arrow you should use a half arrow now on the test portion for exam two the multiple choice portion um, you don't have to show the mechanism but for the bonus section of the test where there will be descriptive questions which will require you to um, require you to um, derive a mechanism for a given uh, set of reaction okay so this is really the very first time we are starting to learn reaction mechanisms and everything I've shown you since I have broke the CL2 into two chlorine free radical is is all mechanism okay this is how a reactant goes into a product so now we have a series of products right of course, the other one is on the previous screen, but if you notice, this is one of the products, right? This is second product. Every reaction has reactants, products, and then you also have something called a catalyst, which we have not yet learned, but we will learn down the road, is it speeds up the rate of a reaction. 
right, without it being consumed. So every reaction will have a reactant, set of reactants, and then set of products. And then you also have the reaction mechanism through which a reactant or rea set of reactants are converted into products. Now, when I come back, I'm going to discuss with you the various types of free radicals that you can generate. And then the stability of those free radicals would determine what type of products would be formed. Okay, now this is where the knowledge that you've learned through your uh, your condensed line structures will be of utmost importance because it's not possible always to draw a full skeleton structure like I did for methane, okay? And that's why I will show you maybe one example with, with a full structure, but then again, we have learned enough um, on, we've got enough practice on how to draw condensed structures and most of you are comfortable with that. So as we move further, and in not just this video uh, talking about mechanism, but in all future videos, I would try to resort to the condensed line structures because it takes less time and it's more efficient and we can do more on a single screen than have to switch screens. All right, so this is how a free radical reaction works. So when I come back, I'll discuss with you the types of free radicals you can generate and then the stability of those free radicals would determine the type of products you will make. All right, so stay tuned for more videos.